So, Sharon, what uh, what were you like before when you first contacted me? Give give the listeners a here's you beforehand. Right. So before, um, some people would have described me as looking like I had uh, some form of Parkinson's um, because of the tremors that I had um, and difficulty walking. Um, And then with the speech issues I had, um, not to mention my difficulty in just putting words together and sentences together and actually forgetting where I was or what I was talking about mid-sentence. Um, you know, people would have said, gee, you sound to me, you kind of sound like a stroke victim. Of course, you know, that's not what, you know, I was diagnosed with. Um, and because my condition is considered really rare, um, you know, some experts, I know you talked to, you know, said it's like 0.2% of the 30 to 40 million of contrast die given annually um, have a reaction. Um, some experts believe it's more, there's really Um, Not a lot of research, but there's more and more coming out. Um, Those experts um, refer to my condition as a gadolinium deposition disease because, unfortunately, in people like me, you know, they say the gadolinium is supposed to all come out, but me it retained. And um, I started having issues immediately, and um, they were, you know, devastating uh, to my health, to say the least. Wow. So I got this call and she starts talking to me about it. And I was like, oh, I'm really not sure that hyperbarics is going to help. So there's like one, one case study that was written up by Chuck Norris's wife, right? I think you had introduced yeah. me to that. And, and I started pulling the string and trying to figure this out. Now, this is hard at best and nowhere near. This is an experimental sort of a treatment for this type of thing. But uh, obviously, Sharon was at her last ditch, right? It was about... 13 months after she had gotten afflicted with this poisoning that she finally shows up in Tampa, Florida, shows up in Tampa, Florida. And my first introduction to her was beautiful young lady, cannot really speak. You know, she's she's choppy in her sentence. It's like, "Uh, I want and I'm I'm trying not to exaggerate it. uh, And but. She was unable to physically speak that well, and she was unable to get her point across, but you could see she was working upstairs, maybe not fully, but she was definitely working. So what we did was we did an EEG beforehand, we did an EEG afterwards, we checked her, uh, and then, you know, we did a couple of tests and so forth, and then we started putting her in the hyperbaric chamber. Well, about two weeks later, Uh, This is like one of my favorite moments in all of my clinic experience here. Two weeks into it, I'm typing on the computer out in the front of the clinic. And she goes, hey, Dr. Tori, I'd like to show you something. And my one of my guys, Chris, is hand walking her out. And she is literally walking out. Now, she wheelchaired into me. And then two weeks later, she's literally walking with somebody's assistance uh, out. And, and that was only because her legs had atrophied so much from disuse or maluse, not using them. And, uh, and all of a sudden she's walking. So I just, I immediately wrapped my arms around her and hugged her. But, um, you know, what was your impression of that particular day? You're two weeks into it, as I, as I recall. It, you know, it, this whole thing has been so surreal. You know, first of all, you know, you're, you know, when this happened to me and I was in the hospital, like this never happens, this never happens. I'm like, I'm like, well, it's happening, you know, can I have some treatment, please? And, um, you know, um, you know, they gave me Benadryl and, you know, the hives kind of went away, but I progressively was starting to get, you know, worse. And, you know, unfortunately, one of the things that happened to me was um, I had a follow-up MRI in October, you know, showing that I had, you know, what the neurologist calls atypical brain damage and um, diagnosed me with a movement disorder, um, you know, speech impairment, cognitive impairment. And in fact, just, um, this is just still hard to talk about. Um, it's just so emotional, you know, when you have this happen to you and you, it doesn't just happen to you, it happens to your whole family, you know? Um, but just a couple of weeks before I came to see you, um, when I was in neurology, they had given me, you know, some testing results and report from, um, you know, uh, another clinician. And I was basically told you're incompetent. You are, of course, I hadn't been able to drive anyway, even if I wanted to, but they said, absolutely, you are not permitted to drive. 
um, you, um, because of your memory and cognitive deficits and your, you know, physical impairments, and, uh, you know, you need 24 seven hour care. You're not to be left alone for your own safety. Um, and my husband and I kind of joke about it now, but it wasn't funny at the time. Like, and you should not have any access to any money or, you know, paying the bills or, you know, because I wasn't considered, you know, competent enough to make good decisions and, and, you know, to be able to, to do those things, you know, um, adequately. Um, and that's just probably one of the most humiliating and humbling experiences I've ever been through. Um, but, uh, so to go from that then to, you know, having Chris help walk me around the corner, not very far, but just the fact that I could do it without shaking, you know, um, it, it just blew my mind. Uh, I was just, just so grateful and so excited and, um, just, it was so much better than expected. Um, we didn't really know what to expect. And um, I always appreciated that when I contacted you that, you know, you didn't make me any grandiose promises, but, you know, you had heard about my condition. You were, you know, as familiar with it as, you know, anybody could be, because, you know, again, there's not a lot out there um, and they're still studying it. Um, so to go from that and then, you know, you saying, well, we'll see um, to that was just, you know, I remember crying with you and just saying, thanks for giving my life. I wasn't crying. You were crying. <laughs> yeah, but it was, you know. <laughs> I had something in my eye. It was okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, a, you know, it was but, an overwhelming moment. I mean, here yeah. you have this patient that walks in that is unable to walk. She's shaking so bad. And your shaking had stopped. I want to say four days into it, your shaking had almost completely stopped. Yeah, that, the tremors started um, dissipating really quickly. And, um, you know, one of the things, too, that was, you know, so hard about this was, you know, because I had already gone through um, treatment, which I still think was valuable, um, and, it, and it did help a lot. I was, in some ways, in many ways, in worse shape than um, when I came to you. Um, I did 10 weeks of uh, the DTP acuation, um, which I learned about from Gina Norris. And I did have significant improvement, but um, we did that over the summer. But then, you know, in the fall, I started um, regressing. And I was like, oh, man, you know. Um, and so it was like, well, do I do more TTPK chelation? You know, I don't, didn't know what to do. And at that point, I was still having a hard time, you know, thinking. It's really hard to advocate for yourself when you're, you know, not basically able to communicate um, and process things, you know, intellectually like you normally would, uh, you know, and my, my husband, God bless him, you know, he's been supportive 100% of the time all the way, but, you know, it's been hard on him too, you know, he doesn't know what to do, and um, I started out with uh, a one GP, and, you know, you know, not necessarily a bad guy or anything, but he was like, you know, I don't know what to do for you, um, and unfortunately, he, you know, to my knowledge, he didn't really look into anything to help me, so I had to find a different, um, you know, GP who then, you know, helped hook me up with, you know, neurology appointments and things like that. And, um, you know, so in the meantime, you know, I'm sort of in this state of, you know, confusion and, you know, obviously it's upsetting on top of that. So you got that layered on and, right. you know, um, and a lot of people don't understand if you're not familiar with, you know, um, gadolinium, gadolinium toxicity or gadolinium deposition disease you know, but it's a heavy toxic metal. And, you know, my understanding is it's considered more toxic than even lead or mercury. And so, you know, it doesn't just affect you physically. It like, it literally, it makes you nuts. You know, it, it's, uh, it's embarrassing to say that, but I feel for the sake of, you know, awareness, people need to understand, you know, what it is you're dealing with. So then when you go to doctors who aren't familiar with it, they're, and your reacting maybe not quite right, and you're having a hard time communicating, they're thinking, you know, it's just all kind of probably in her head. You know, I've never really heard of this. So, um, so I gave you a lot of credit, you know, immediately because you didn't dismiss me. And that's everything, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm not anti-Western medicine, you know, but um, obviously it has its limitations and there's always a cost to benefit, you know, ratio. And, you know, you can't just dismiss people when things don't go right or don't go according to the cookie cutter way things are supposed to go, you know, and, it meant everything just to have, you know, you take me seriously in that. And um, it just, it's been an amazing journey, this, this whole process. So uh, 
so Sharon presented to me and I was trying to think about, and, you know, I worked with her neurologist and, uh, and we kind of worked through a care plan and a thought process when this all came to pass. And because it sounded very traumatic brain injury esque, and all of the traumatic brain injury stuff that we've been doing here in Tampa has been at 1.75. I decided 1.75 would be the best. Talk with the physician. He concurred, wrote the prescription, sends her down. I'm like, okay, this is great. So she gets down and we're doing 1.75 BID or twice a day. So she's doing it two times a day for an hour a piece, right? So total treatment times 76 minutes times two per day. And after 20 solid days of doing that, she is walking out of our clinic at the very end. She is not shuddering, not, not having any problem with speech. She improved on her scores on the, uh, on the EEG. Uh, and, and we'll show you a picture here. We'll, we'll put a picture right over the top here. And as you can see in this picture, what you're looking at is basically the amplitude and the frequency. And you can see how there's a couple of bad connections in the back. And I think that was because she was actually shaking so much. She was still shaking. And even in the beginning, her head was shaking a lot. Um, so I don't think those connections were even being made, but you can see that there's dullness over the back of it and a little brighter up front, but still not a lot. That's suggestive of prefrontal cortex activity being okay, that it's there and the emotion was all there, but back of the brain really was not switched on very well. Contrast that to the image on the right and you see this big, bright, red, brilliant, wonderful woman that's like, woohoo, there you are. Welcome to the party, right? So it was totally, it was two different people that we got to treat. Yeah. So uh, she's now in physical therapy, now doing great things. Her physical therapist saw her today, right? Yes. Um, he saw me for the first time on Monday, yeah, yesterday, Monday. Um, yes. And he, it, when I walked in without the use of a walker and, you know, without, you know, hunched over and, you know, shaking and um, he he thought it was somebody else at first. Like for the oh, first few seconds, that. he was like, "Who who is this?" And um, just terrific, so absolutely beautiful. So yeah, great. It's been well. Amazing. Absolutely terrific. Sharon, thank you so much for becoming our patient, for bringing all this happiness into our life. We truly like, we, you know, we bonded you and I. And like I said, I had a little dust in my eye when you were leaving. and It was bad. But uh, no, I think it was a great story. And hopefully we are writing this up for presentation as a case study so that maybe other people can learn from it and it can be in an official journal. So we're writing this up for posterity and this is going to be great. We're going to keep following up with you and see how we can and see how well you're doing as the time goes on. Hoping for great things.